Welcome to Scrubbing In. I'm Paul Ross. I'm going to take you around Navy Medicine to show who we are and what we do. We're at the Prosthetics Lab at Naval Medical Center San Diego. And while this might look like a machine shop, it's actually a place of healing. Let's see how they do it. So Brian's sitting in front of a sewing machine, and one of the things I thought we would not be doing when we came here to cover Wounded Warrior Care was sewing. But I'm also wearing an apron, so who knows what we're going to be doing. Why don't you explain to us what we're going to be doing here, Brian? We use the sewing machine to create casting socks and pants uh, to put over the limbs while we're wrapping them in plaster, as well as use it for sewing upper extremity harnesses for prosthetics. So let's go ahead and show you here what we're going to do. We're going to create a BK casting sock. So we're gonna start here on the edge and use the foot pedal to push in. We'll reverse it, lock in the stitch, and then we're looking for just a nice rounded end to the sock. After a quick lesson, Brian wanted to give me a shot at the sewing machine, but unlike my Nana, I wasn't very successful. Lock it in. Lock it in, reverse. Right now, Up. and take a few stitches. All right and the string pulled out. And then we, okay. So as you can see, mine doesn't look nearly as good as Brian's, but a uh, valiant first effort. So what are the other types of things you would make using the sewing machine? Uh, we'd also create, we can actually create a set of pants and we'll put those and we'll sew them to the length of the limb and so that we can custom fit that. And so why, why is this a significant um, item for an amputee. Oh, we use this so that we're not wrapping the plaster directly on their skin and pulling out the hair. Okay. As well as being able to make marks when we're taking measurements. Great. Brian's here with Nate Jackson, one of the prosthetic technicians here who helps wounded warriors every day. We just came from the sewing room. And now what we're going to be doing is doing a cast on Nate, and he's agreed to let me do it. So hopefully it goes better than the sewing, uh, but Brian's going to first give me a quick lesson on, uh, on how to do it. So we've set Nate up here using the sock that you sewed earlier. Uh, we've marked out all the bony prominences. These will then transfer over to the mold. What we're going to do is take a cast that we will remove, and that'll be the negative, which we will later fill with plaster to have a positive mold of his limb. We've also gone ahead and marked out for some measurements for overall circumference. So what we're going to do now is we use plaster uh, to wrap, and what we're trying to do is get the volume as well as shape the limb a little bit. Brian showed me the technique for making a cast, and I applied it to Nate, who was a great sport. How am I doing so far? Looking good. There we go. Then it was time to make the plaster mold. The prosthetics lab at Naval Medical Center San Diego treated 264 amputees last year with a combined 369 limbs lost. These amputees were made up of active duty service members, their families, and retirees. So Nate's got me and we're going to do the next step in the process. Uh, we're going to be filling the mold that we just made. Um, and apparently I did at least a good enough job to where we could use the one we, we just made. So uh, Nate, explain to us what we're going to be doing. So after the process takes an impression of the patient's limb, um, as you said, the next step now is to fill this mold. Um, what I do being as a responsibility technician, I'll actually take it back here to the plaster room and we'll start the process of filling the mold. Give it one more. Give it That'll do it. We'll take this from here. What I like to do? Ooh, no, no, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's, <laughs> like, honestly, I, I got you. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, so yeah. Now, what we want to do is take the bucket and we're gonna pour it inside the mold. Okay. Yeah. Now we're good. Okay. And just all the way to the top? All the way to the top. There you go. You can set that down. So what I like to do next is I like to tap the mold a little bit. And what that does is it gets the air levels out. 
we've already got our pipe set where we want it. Just go ahead and put that in there again. Give it a little tap. Now it's uh, watching paint dry. The plaster has hardened. What's the next step? The next step is to begin the modification process. As you can see, some of our markings have transferred over to the mold, and what we want to do is reduce the overall volume of this limb so that when he's standing in the socket, it's supporting his weight. Uh, to do that, we use these rasps, and what we're looking to do is remove the plaster over those tissue areas that I had you molding in, and then leave the plaster over the bony areas. So what we do is we go ahead and take the rasp, and we push into it, and therefore removing. And we've, ta we've taken some measurements during the casting phase, and we can go ahead and try and achieve those, um, as well as as much as this is a science, it's a little bit of an art form. Right. So why don't you go ahead and give it a try? Sure. So I think I got a D in art in high school, so, so we'll see. So once we've got the mold modified down to our measurements, then we're going to go ahead and take this into the oven room and we'll go ahead and pull the check socket over the top of this. Okay. Oven room sounds exciting, so um, once this gets done, we're we'll ready to go. So I'm with Brian about to start the next step in the process, which involves a very hot oven, but I assume we're doing more than just baking cookies. Exactly. What we're ready to do is create the check socket. That's going to be used as our diagnostic fitting tool. So what we've done is we've placed a half inch sheet of plastic in the oven that we're letting cook for 15 minutes. Uh, at the seven and a half minute mark, we're going to take this out, we're going to flip it over, and what it's going to do is it's going to droop and form a bubble. And when the plastic is fully cooked, we're going to walk it over here, we're going to flip it over the mold, and then with the vacuum, it's going to pull in the plastic around the mold. Okay. So let's go ahead and flip our plastic to fully cook it here, so we'd be very careful around the edges. Now, how hot does this oven get? We cook this plastic at 400 degrees. And have you ever been burned? Yes, I have. That's why we have the nice gloves <laughs> here. Protect our hands and arms. So we're going to let that go ahead and cook for another seven and a half minutes. Brian, what made you want to get into prosthetics in the first place? I was always interested in the field of medicine. wasn't sure exactly what field I wanted to get into, but the hands-on aspect of the field really intrigued me. Being able to build and create something for someone to go out and use uh, was a deciding factor for me. I assume it's got to be extremely rewarding to build something for a patient and help them get to the point where they can go do things that they couldn't do after their injury. It is very rewarding to see somebody out there tackling new feats or getting back to doing something that they wanted to do uh, previous to their injury. And so to be able to create that and build that specific to the user, to the patient, uh, is very rewarding. And our plastic's ready to get pulled here. Go ahead and just let that easily droop down, nice and easy. We're not stretching and pulling. What we're going to do is we're going to work this down to the wheel, and we're going to let the plastic suck in. We've got the vacuum running here. I'm just pressing on the plastic to mold it in. We're working out to make sure we don't get any wrinkles inside the mold here. The next step was cutting out the prosthetic. Although I warned Brian I should not be using power tools, he gave me a quick lesson and handed me the saw, but he made sure to help along the way. And there we go. So with barely any of Brian's help, I was able to completely cut this by myself. Nicely so, done. So Brian, the mold is back in a vise. Uh, you said we're going to be removing it. Uh, how, how do we go about doing that? Some brute force. Let's see if we oh. can knock this off. All right. Yep. Hit it a little too hard that last time. So I assume we're getting close to the end here. What's the next step? We are we're very close. We're going to go ahead and clean up these trim lines so that we have a nice smooth edge to fit on the patient. So is this something that I'm going to be able to do? You've done really well today showing me everything, but let's leave this one to the professionals. All right, I, I've actually got no problem with that, Brian, so uh, why don't you take it from here? Okay. As the prosthetic took shape and was being finalized, I started thinking about how a piece of molded plastic like the one we just created can be instrumental in changing a wounded warrior's life after a devastating injury. 
The development and advancement of prosthetics like the one we made today help our wounded service members move forward in their recovery and get back to the activities they once made. The key factor in the rehabilitation process of amputees is prosthetic labs like this one. From the initial fitting, staff members are with them through their entire recovery process. Thanks for joining us on Scrubbing In, we'll see you next time.